Hello everyone, and welcome to the continuation of the Makone series. Uh, this is part three. So, to start, we've received 80 gold from Therados, which I believe we got because I begged him for this money. I was begging basically everyone for a bunch of gold. Uh, we didn't find any magic sites in the woods. Got a couple guys killed on a march. It's all right. Honestly, I feel like we get a little lucky here with our victory. That we, I think we could have routed. Looking at that, I mean, that was not that was not clean, but it worked out. We we took those light cavalry, and we took Port Strong, which is important. It's a farmland. So we have our mace mercenaries here, and they run in basically at the perfect time to start tanking. Yeah, sorta. And good enough. And with this, we succeed in taking our cap circle entirely, which is very nice. And we've moved an army all the way over here to the west. Here we have our Adamentos pole mark. Get some jade Amazons. I guess this guy casted, uh, nothing? I guess I didn't have him cast anything. Anyway, uh, Gigantes are pretty crazy, so we crush them. We also got to see Agartha try taking a province with a couple troglodyte lords. I think both of them are on the Hall of Fame. Yeah, they're both on the Hall of Fame. So he's still using the Black Plate strategies. These guys are really tanky. But he's going up against a pretty big collection of Horse Tribe. And, uh, yeah, one of them gets killed. And the other guy, I think he has a limp. Yeah, he, or he's crippled even worse. Yeah, he's trying to run away, but yeah, there's no hope for this guy. So, yeah, Agartha gets crushed. So that was a little unfortunate for Agartha, but great for us, of course. We find a bunch of air gems on a mountaintop. And a little misfortune, you know. So, just to clarify... This is still pre-patch Makone. This game was pre-patch until about turn 35, I want to say, maybe 36, 37. So I'm operating in trash bin Makone land for a big portion of this game. So we, we are still decisively bad at this point. But we're starting to build a palisade up here in the Mudwood. And I am trying to converse with Kailasa to keep him away from my borders, because I really don't want him to come down here to take this province. Yeah, and we have a pretty solid border with Tianxi now. And looks like Agartha is going to take some lizard shamans down here, and maybe eventually get over to this, although it looks like Tianxi is actually going to snipe this province from him, which is very sad for Agartha. However, Agartha is also all the way over here. Um, oh yes, and you may be looking at this thinking, wait, what am I doing? I'm attacking Ubar. Uh, yes, I'm attacking Ubar because presently, Ubar is located right here in 76, and Therados, over here, has either this turn or the last turn launched an invasion into Ubar, I think in here, in Province 91, and he absolutely destroyed Ubar's expansion army. I, I want to say he killed like 20 genies or something and lost almost nothing. Uh, regardless, it was a it was such a crippling disastrous blow for him so early that I'm over here thinking, you know, 
why not? We can give it a try. I mean, my hoplites are at their best the, at the uh, in the early game, so might as well make use of them right now. And I'm going to try to take this province. I'm going to try to vulture from him, because it looks like Therados is actually going to run Ubar over. And of course, this province is also a great find for us. It gets us our Jade Sorceresses, so we are now in nature and water magic. Uh, well, I mean, we already had water, but it's a good cross path to have. Otherwise, just trying to site search. I still, I, I've not found, like, anything. But my money this turn is pretty good. So I'm able to make a Geronte. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, I see here in the... That's that's so weird. Yeah, the, the gold prices are as if it's post-patch. But you can see I'm floating 10 gold. Because these things costed 110. So I, I didn't actually have the money to... I didn't. I wasn't actually saving ten gold. That's a weird, weird bug that the game has retroactively changed what my turns were like. But we have some scouting in Kylos's land. It looks like all this stuff is pretty empty. I don't know why he plopped a temple down here. I guess is to stop Theridos's dominion from creeping in on his stuff. Who is that? Oh yes, Kylosa. Kylosa and Pangea are both the biggest. Makes sense for Pangea. Kylosa being the biggest is a little uh, strange. But you can see my expansion has started to improve dramatically. We are pulling right into the middle of the pack, which is exactly where we want to be. We don't want to be too intimidating. Um, you can see my money this turn has skyrocketed from taking so many provinces. My gem income is alright, nothing special. But Saramadia actually getting a very big gem income lead. Research Ubar... Researching heavy, whatever. I got a big army of slaves. So. So here on turn 12, we got Alteration 2. So we have Stone Skin. And we tried to expand over here into these Lion Tribe. And this is just with Hoplites, you know. I mean, no, no magic here on my side. And we win, I think. Yeah, yeah, we win. Pretty good. Didn't didn't lose a single man and took out all those lion tribe. And then this is me attacking Makone with my um with this guy in the Hall of Fame. And Ubar doesn't have anything here, really just province defense. I guess he did not expect me to attack him. I think diplomatically, I was... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so after I take this province from Ubar, I notice there's an Ubarian army over here. And at this point, I'm like, oh god. Oh, it didn't... This is, this is bad. You know, I was hoping I could vulture, you know, just chomp a nice little bit from this guy and not have to worry, um, not get into a prolonged engagement, just sort of take one province and go, but I confirmed by taking this that this is in his cap circle, so this is already pretty untenable, this is already looking like early game hyper war, and I don't know where these camels are going to go, and camel riders are very annoying, stealthy things, I mean, it, it wouldn't be difficult for my hoplites to beat them in battle, but you know, I mean, I can't track them down, so if he wants to start screwing with me and, like, sneaking into my territory and popping my provinces, it's just going to be a nightmare to deal with it. So I was very concerned at this point. I'm still making research monkeys in my capital because I don't know how to play Makone, and I'm trying to take 82 over here. I'm sending this low coast back here to my capital so that we can pick up all these units that I've been recruiting this big army, and this guy's going over to site search. I think I'm going to try to take 80, or I'm just going to try to defend myself from Ubar. I'm not sure what the plan is. But it's turn 12. We can count the provinces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 10 provinces on turn 12. Considering our start, I say not bad at all. Not a bad start. Could have been way, way worse. 
but uh, by the same token, it probably also should have been way better. <laughs> and I blundered very badly. Oh yeah, we, we also got to see Tian Chi with his expansion army fighting these horse tribe. This is his prophet, actually, so we, we get to see his bless. He's got natural protection, MR, and magic weapons. This is obviously for his demons, uh, the holy... Yeah, you know, whatever the demons are. The, the, the Chinese river club people. And also the uh, fireball throwing guys. And the goat head things. I, I mean, I guess it also helps the dual-wielding choppy boys, too. Because getting them more protections, all right. But it's sort of like, well, you, you could always just cast like marble warriors on them in the first place. Make them a little more tanky uh, with natural protection that way instead of using the bless. Sectarian movement has emerged in the province. Their false prophet is preaching and gathering his flock. Faith will decrease until you root them out. Well, the problem is this province has three death, so. I don't, I'm not really interested in walking in there and rooting out this guy because it's possible this province could have a disease uh, site on it. It's definitely got a death gem on it, which I want, but I'm I'm no I'm nowhere near getting a death gem economy at this point. You know, I'm I'm solidly in the Kone elemental tree. So this is turn 13, the dormant pretender gods are starting to awaken. So here we are fighting in the desert. Uh, there's a lot less undead horsemen than I thought there would be. I thought there was going to be like 30 of them, or like 40, not 6 or whatever that was. So I mean, there's a skeleton spammer back here, a, a necromancer, but we've got more than enough bodies to clean up these skeletons and we win and here I am with the hoplite army and as it turns out uh, Ubar didn't move he kept his army in place uh, I'm not really sure why or what what he was thinking so a bunch of birds come down uh, these birds have no way in hell of ever hurting us but they can cause fatigue, you know, waste our time attacking them. Give the camels more time to shoot their arrows. And then we get into the melee. And you can see my units are pretty banged up. Like, there's a lot of injuries on these guys. Thankfully, my pull mark is not over here. Is my pull mark? Yeah, so he has stone skin casted, so his protection is 27. Pretty good. 26 on the body, 29 on the head. And yeah, we, like, it, somehow just start rapidly killing everything and we win the battle. Yeah, we wipe out a huge chunk of Ubar's army. And, uh, yeah, they flee over here to the desert. If we check the score graphs, check the army size, you can see, like, his army has cratered. It's almost the smallest in the whole game. Abyssia, with his extreme resource intensity troops, is bravely holding bottom presently, but Ubar is looking in re like a really, really bad spot. And I think Therados at this point has taken this province from Ubar, or something like that. Anyway, he's in a, he's in a very bad way. And we were able to take this province, too, so it's, it's nice. This one gets uh, Woodhenge Druids. So it looks like I'm taking the Locos. Oh, yeah, I hired uh, these. Yes, so I'm taking all of my troops, uh, including the Macemen, because I did rehire the Macemen, as it turns out. And I'm going to take everything to try to take these Ko-Oni down, because I got slammed so badly by them the first time. I'm not going to let it happen again. So just spamming out... Peltas and Hoplites, again, I'm, I'm not making a fifth one of these because at the time you can only make four, so. And I am getting an E4, I'm making another one, I guess for, um, I'm not sure, this seems like a mistake, seems like I should just be making a pull mark. So Kailasa finished building a fort over here in this province, so he is starting to secure his border with me, and uh, yeah, just settling in. 
And here we are on turn 14. We searched for a magic site, didn't find any. And Machaka re made a new prophet, and so did Kailasa too. So I moved my army here to this province. I'm trying to hold my newly acquired land, and Ubar's not having it. He wants this province. It's in his cap circle. Totally fair to him, uh, but I'm not going to let him take it. So I moved an army. I thought he was going to try to steal it this turn steal it. I thought he was going to try to reclaim it this turn. But these hoplites are getting a lot of experience killing camels. And yeah, they stood no chance at all. And we wipe out another group of Ubar's forces, taking absolutely no losses at all. We find a magic site in Valadun, which is super great for us. Like, it's death, which sucks, but it's one nature, one death gem per turn. This is amazing. This is precisely the type of magic site we want to find. And the fact that it occurred naturally just makes it all the better, because this province could still have good stuff in it. Anyway, I'm keeping this monkey general over here, because I want to build a palisade over here eventually. And we can see Therados is now starting to really tighten the noose on Ubar, I'm sure... Me killing, like, 60 of his camel warriors has really not helped the guy at all. Um, but hey, it's free land as far as I'm concerned, so I'm not going to complain. And we are going to try to take out these Ko-Oni with this big army. Building a palisade over here in Mudwood. I was so worried that Kailasa was going to quickly race an army over or teleport his god that he was going to interrupt the palisade while it was in construction. And since I only have my capital, I was very, very worried that if it got blown up, if it got interrupted, I would just be in such a terrible position. It would be really hard to recover. So I'm moving the army to protect this province, protect this clay, and otherwise just scouting around. Uh, I randomly picked up Dominion over here in 187, so Saramadia is uh, incredibly in the massive swamp, which is very appropriate. Also, this province has a magma pit. I guess uh, Ubar site searched this for me, so. Oh yeah, we picked up a Wind Spire over here too in the Timeless Waste. I don't think I mentioned that. So, so this turn, I am opting to make an Elder Cyclops. Partly because I wanted to save money by making something slow to recruit, so that way I could build a palisade in on my next turn. Otherwise, uh, just continuing to site search with all my Air 1 E4s. And this will be the final part of this turn. Turn 15. We got three Earth Gems from Kailasa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That, that totally changes the story. It all just came flooding back to me in an instant. I didn't attack Ubar because I wanted his clay, or because Therados was beating him, but those are true, those those are both uh, contributors to why I did attack him, but ultimately, the main reason I attacked him was because Kailasa bullied me into doing it. Kailasa said, hey, you want a nap 3 with me? That's fine, but you have to go attack Ubar, and I have scouts over there, so I'm going to see if you actually are or are not attacking him. So that's why I did it. And so, because of that, Kailasa also said, if you attack him to make the deal a little better, I'll give you three Earth Gems. And we'll look at the score graphs uh, at the end of this turn. Hopefully I can win this now. Yeah, this, this might have been a little overkill. But we take the Ko-Oni province, we actually lose some Helots, how sad. And this is me continuing to steal land from Ubar's cap circle. He actually has uh, some camel riders here that were hiding. Uh, but it doesn't really make a difference. The hoplites are a force of nature that cannot be stopped, so we just walk in and kill everything again, taking no losses. 
we get a fun slave lord event, and we get a huge number of blood slaves, and a nice chunk of gold, too. Yeah, I'm so I'm building a palisade over here on 74. I'm moving Admentos over here to the Bright Woods to finish taking, like, the rest of Ubar's cap circle. I think Tianchi is getting in on this vulturing, too, and is taking these provinces. Uh, but Therados has secured... You know, I mean, you, you can see, like, Therados is going to take Ubar. And his god is here, even. John Cena, the Telkin god king. So, it's uh, it's looking rough for Ubar. He's, uh, yeah, he's, he's out of the game. It was unfortunate that he took an imprisoned pretender. Because I think if his god woke up three turns ago, he would have been in a much, much better position to hold off this Theradosian assault. Not just from the improved power of his new genies that he would get, but also just the seduction, the corruption power, um, the giant ifrits. And it turns your lame fortress into the city of brass, which is a very taxing to breach castle. Here in the cave, we can produce nothing. We can make these little demon priests that are maybe sometimes possibly death. I'm not going to make them. Anyway, building the palisade over here, and I'm also putting a lab down on the same turn that it's getting being built, so that way I can not make a shaman because I'm too slow and I should have moved this guy earlier so I could build a temple, but clearly, as you can see, I'm going for infrastructure on this turn. And I'm just getting my cyclops out now and a bunch of hot blights. So to review the score graphs of turn 15, Ubar has basically been wiped out. The player at the top is Agartha, who has got a huge amount of provinces, followed by Tianchi, Pangea, and, and me, actually. Me. That's interesting. Income. So his provinces are very lucrative, even though he may not have the most. He has more than anyone else. Obviously, Therados and Ubar, both totally at the bottom. It's a real shame uh, Therados is absorbing such a tiny, tiny little percentage of Ubar's gold, even though he is sieging his capital right now. Saramadi is still making a lot of gems, but we're starting to catch up. We're in second place there. In terms of research, Ubar is devoting everything he has to research purely, followed by Tianchi. Eh, Dominion, we're kind of always at the bottom of this graph, so... In terms of army size, though, our army has been boosted substantially, and Saramadius took a major hit. I have to assume he took his skeletons to try to take, like, a throne or something, and they just got slaughtered. And no thrones have been claimed yet as of turn 15. So that's the end of part three of our Makone series. Thank you for watching.